What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Justin Davis and Drone Camps RC is celebrating our 10th anniversary this year on YouTube. So I wanna say uh, thank you for, for all the congratulations on Facebook and right here on the channel. Um, I do appreciate that and I appreciate you and that's why we continue to make these videos and spread knowledge around the world with our YouTube channel about FPV and drones. So today we're gonna to talk about a topic that's like, seriously, it's been on my mind this week and I've seen some people talking about the differences between inverted motors and upward facing motors. And some people are on Facebook and other places on YouTube saying inverted motors suck and um, upward motors fly better. And uh, well, we're gonna set the record straight today and I'm gonna give you some knowledge on why we have inverted motors what the evolution of those inverted motors are and what they're specifically used for. Um, so no, they don't fly like shit, um, but you have to know why they're inverted. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and talk about now the differences between the two. And if you're brand new into FPV, this would be a great video for you. It'll really set kind of the record straight on inverted motors versus upward facing motors. There really is no comparison here. Um, they're used for two different things. So let's go ahead and drop some knowledge now on the bench and talk about why. All right, guys, now you are sitting down with someone who's had over 10 years experience with quadcopters, flight controllers, the evolution of FPV, um, as well as working with companies to do prototypes. Um, I've designed all sorts of frames uh, behind the scenes with a lot of these different companies um, and just made thousands of suggestions over the years at, that we have seen come to fruition. So um, reviewers like myself also have a big part in the industry by helping companies research. I mean, we're, we're all basically uh, beta pilots. Um, beta flight is a very good name for that software because everything seems to still be in beta stage. Our hobby is very DIY, so um, it's been a constant evolution of change over the past 10 years, and I've seen a lot of cool stuff. So, you know, with this innovation becomes um, apparent when they started doing inverted motors. And inverted motors are nothing new. They have been around for a really long time. Um, and one of the first quadcopters that I flew that had inverted motors on it was, and I'll, and I'll try to put a picture up of it here. It was by Horizon Hobby. It was made by E-Flight. It was called the Nano. Uh, I believe it was the, the Q or the X or something like that. Um, I'll try to find the official name. But this motor's on this quad were brushed and they came into my shop. It was a little ready to fly bundle for a, like $120 and it was a trainer drone, had no camera on it. You could fly it for about four to five minutes uh, around the house and inside was the best place to fly. But when it came up off my shop counter um, in my drone camp store at the time, we had a brick and mortar store. When it came up and it hovered, it was the most stable drone I had ever flown. And it was almost like it had optical flow and GPS on this thing. I mean, it was rock solid. If you guys had one in the past, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but those inverted motors, it really started making the wheels in my brains just start spinning really fast. And I kept thinking about that a lot. And over the years, these quads came into existence with carbon fiber frames. We had F3 flight controllers and um, F4 and you know, all the way up to F7. Uh, we've also had so many, uh, we have new flight controllers still coming out um, with a little bit more, but they're, re they're really honed in now. Flight controllers are great. They've had a great evolution. So we're in a good place now, but upward facing motors have been the tradition for at least 10 to 15 years. I mean, they've been the, the standard. So these upward facing motors, they are a different animal on a carbon frame like this. And a lot of this upward facing type of performance has a mostly to do with the frame setup. If you put these upward facing motors on a true X design, you don't have any prop guards on here or you know giant uh, unibody top plate like is on this one. I mean, this is pretty much shaped like a Frisbee um, at this point. And because of this type of performance, we talked about this in our DJI Avada review where you know I, I it just pointed out all the tumble that it had. People were having crashes down the side of mountains and things. They were trying to dive things and it had washout. And that's when the flight controller reaches its threshold 
and it, it reaches all the way to its threshold, and then essentially it goes over a cliff itself. It kind of tump trips out, and so it will catch itself, but it takes a moment, and sometimes people will crash their Avadas because, you know, they were trying to do things the Avada wasn't made for. Um, and do the inverted motors fly like shit? Um, no, they don't if they're used in the correct manner. Um, if you're trying to freestyle with inverted motors, that's not what they're made for. That's like taking your Prius down to a drag strip, putting it in power mode, and trying to race a Porsche uh, 911. You're gonna lose. Um, and does the Prius drive like shit? No, not really. I pick my kids up all the time with it uh, and drive across town. It's a great little commuter car, but that's what it's made for. It's, it's made for just a daily driver car. It's not made for drag racing. This one, on the other hand, the way this frame is designed over the evolution of 10 years, even though this is a dead cat, it will outfly this quad when it comes to freestyle. This upper face and motor design has all the stability and power that I'm looking for. But as far as science goes, and we're going to get a little bit scientific now, this motor, an upper facing motor, has more aggravated turbulent airflow happening because the, the airflow is going down through this frame and it's, it's hitting this frame here. So you don't have a clean pathway for the air to come down through. And both of these designs are great. They have, you know, they've, they've pretty much been proven over the, the test of time and so many different types of designs. They keep coming out and both of these type of designs keep coming out with uh, improvements and better frames and, uh, you know, a little more protection from the scraggle and side plates now. Um, we have motor wire covers, which we used to make our own back in the day. We would cut the tip of a prop off and kind of um, just use some electrical tape around the top of the, the frame arm. Frame arms used to be a lot wider back in those days, about as wide as a propeller. So um, arms have gotten thinner and they've gotten thicker over the years. So yeah, you know, arms are replaceable now, and which they didn't used to be. It used to be a lot of unibody style frame. Uh, and, and some of the older ones had PCBs that ran the entire length of the quad. So um, you were soldering everything down to a PCB and when it had a little crash you had to replace the whole PCB and redo the whole quad. Um, every time I looked at my ZMR250 it would break. It was crazy. Uh, but that's, you know, that's the big differences between like the inverted facing motors and the upward facing motors and sort of the evolution and why they are designed and engineered the way they're designed and engineered. Just got they're just two separate animals um, and one or the other doesn't fly like shit. You just have to keep it within its category um, for, for what you're trying to use it for. Cinema, freestyle. There you go. Hopefully you enjoyed this informative video today and you learned something. So please do subscribe on the channel, guys. I'm Justin Davis. I'll drop more knowledge on the channel very soon. I'll see you on the next one. Take care.